Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved in Christ, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are watching and listening, I say may God Almighty bless you. This is the Rosalind Abankwa Evangelistic Ministries. And this is the Saint of God, Saint Grace, bringing you the undiluted Word of God. Amen. Beloved, um, I bring you a message. Your testimony is yourself. Your testimony is yourself. Hallelujah. Please, we are all Bible students, so we are learning from the Word of God. Get you your Bible. Let's get inside the Word of God. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. I read. I'm reading the New Living Translation. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Verse 3. Clearly you are a letter from Christ showing the results of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human heart. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God, which is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul said, you are the letter. You are a letter from Christ. I am a letter. You are a letter. Anyone who prefers Christ Jesus, you are a letter from Christ. And the Apostle Paul also said that everyone can read the uh, Corinthians, the church in Corinth. Everyone can read and recognize the good work among among them. Wow. I want you to reread it and reread it and reread it. Then apply it to yourself and your life. That's how you meditate upon the word of God. Your testimony is yourself. Hallelujah. Um, right after high school, um, I, I was in Ghana, West Africa. And I had the I don't know whether to call it chance. I had the chance to, I can't say chance. I had the uh, privilege to travel to the United States of America. That was my first time of traveling and getting away from my parents. As a, in my late teen, I was 19 at that time. And my daddy gave me a very nice Bible, which I've been using since time in memoria. Now it looks all battered and torn. You can see all the solid, the tapes around it. I got it in 2004. I think it was 2003 I got it. That's my name and my daddy's name and everything in, and his stamp, his church. As a minister of God, he put the church stamp in it for me. And when I was about to leave in the airport, uh, daddy said to me, my daughter, 
I put the church transfer card because I know that once you get there, you're going to look for the church that we attend and you're going to go there and they will ask for your transfer card. So if they do ask about your transfer card, I put it, I put it in your, the Bible I gave you. I was like, okay, I was excited. Love it. When I got to New York, you know, I think after a week or so, I was going through my Bible and I found the transfer card. So I said, let me read what is on this card. And then it has dates and my daddy's name. And it said, it has my name. And it said, what it said was that uh, Rosalind and my daddy's last name before I got married. My maiden name. That's my daddy's last name. And he said, It's my first daughter and also my second child. Full stop. And the next statement surprised me, and that is the title of this message. Because as I was worshiping today, uh, I guess the seventh, the Lord said, Go speak about that. I have someone I need to save with that word your daddy told you. Beloved, after my daddy had written my name and said that I am the first daughter, his first daughter and his second child, he went on to say that her testimony is herself. Her testimony is herself. So immediately I read that, I frowned my face. I was like, what does that mean by my testimony is myself? And I, I was kind of hurt for him to have written just that. In fact, I was disappointed that my daddy couldn't write anything about me, my commitment to going to church from Monday through Sunday because I remember very clearly that Mondays was like youth, I was there. Tuesdays was like women's movement, I was there. Wednesday was like church, Bible study was so I was there. I believe it was only Thursdays that probably they didn't have anything. Friday service, I was there. Even when it's all night or half night, I was there. I remember very well. That I remember. And some Saturdays to the youth, uh, sometimes uh, uh, um, the youth might sometimes had the all night service on Saturdays. And I was there. And Sunday church, I was there. So why didn't my daddy write about all this commitment to going to church every day? You know, because I thought he saw what I was doing. I, I, I probably think at that time before I left, I could, I could boast or I could say that among my siblings, I was the one who was going to church more. Not that the rest uh, weren't like churchgoers or anything, but they were younger and they wouldn't want to go to evening service. And I was kind of older and somewhat smarter in my own, smart in my own eyes. And so I was involved with everything, you know, in the church, every activity in the church. So why would he say my testimony is myself? And I was like, I am not going to give this card to anyone. Why didn't my daddy write any good thing about my commitment at church, which I felt should be recommended on my transfer card? My testimony is myself. Beloved, I'm here to tell that your testimony is yourself. And you should know why. You are a letter from Christ. And the whole world is reading you. And through their reading you, they will recognize the Christ that is in you. The Jesus that you believe or think you have what accepted as your Lord and personal Savior. It wasn't long and I got a job. You know, when I came to America, I got a job and I had to go and do babysitting job and I had to go and leave. 
So before I got a job, I was going to church regularly with the person I came to stay with. Evening service and stuff, I was going with them. But when I got a job, I had to go and live with this family, uh, these white folks, as a babysitter. And so there was church time became irregular. Irregular in the sense that I was relieved on Sundays and I think Mondays. Yeah. And so I could only go to church on Sundays. Yes. So I was a, a Sunday church goer. So that Sunday, even when I come home in the morning, I feel tired and I didn't want to go to church. And so for the longest I could I can remember my church lifestyle or uh, to fellowship with the brethren as a believer, which the Bible commands or recommends that we do because it's pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, I think it fell into the water. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to church. That's the truth. I wasn't going to church. I was desperately seeking the American dollars. You know, working from one, living. Uh, I, I was working, even when I quit the, the babysitter job, I went in for companion job, where you stay with some white, old uh, lady, a white person in their home for three months, six months, you know. And so church was <laughs> a foreign language. Fellow going to fellowship as in was a foreign language to me now. And so one time I was at that work, the companion work, and the statement on the card came back to my memory. Her testimony is herself. So I guess that time the Lord was speaking to me. He said, if your father had written that my daughter is very committed to the work of God and to the things of God, he participated in all the activities of the church Monday through Sunday, you would have made a, lie, a liar out of your daddy. Because if you had given your transfer card to this folks this church here in the united states and as you gave it you went into working as a companion living with people working for them taking care of them three months four months six months no church no fellowship nothing so what would that be telling what would that be saying to those people here that is this the girl or is this the young lady that the father claimed that she's very active in the church and fully participating. Where is she? Why can't we find her with the youth service or with the witness movement or with the women's fellowship? Where is she? So luckily, I didn't give it to anybody. I didn't give it to the church folks. But I came to realize and understand why my daddy wrote that. Because the lifestyle that I led when I entered into America was sharp contrast to the lifestyle that I led or lived when I was in Ghana, West Africa. Sharp contrast. And I bet there are many, many, many Ghana folks, Ghanaian folks, or African folks who were zealous for the work of God. They were into the things of God and into the church 24-7 when they were back home in their various countries. But they traveled and that made the change. That brought the difference. So did God go wrong making us to travel to the diaspora? Because now we seem to have thousands of excuses. And I'm not here to preach church that not going to church will, because whether you go to church or you don't go to church if you are not doing the will of the father if you are not working according to the standard of the word of god which is holiness and peace with all men 
You are not going to see the face of God. And that says the word of God. And so my point being that is that, you know, many, this is just a point in, in, in a lesson in what I'm saying. That many folks or many people, both women and men alike, where they were zealous, they were on fire for Christ, you know, when they were back in Africa or some time to some time past. But now they got two, three, four jobs, and even if they don't get any two, three, four, the the kind of work and the schedule that they are taking does not permit them to do the things of God. To fellowship, to pray, to meditate upon the word of God, and their jobs, and family, and friends, and whatever you can think of, business, has separated them from the love of God. And that zeal, the passion, the love that they used to have before has diminished, has become like like a little candle that is about to snuff out that the fire is about to go out your testimony is yourself you cannot claim you're a child of god you're a believer you are christ-like christian means christ-like christ follower because if you look at the lifestyle for our lord jesus christ The three-year ministry that he had, every day counted for him. Every day mattered. And so when you read John chapter 9, he told the disciples, as long as it is day, I must do the work of him who sent me. Because the night is coming where nobody can work. Beloved, whatever uh, behavior, attitude, lifestyle that we are in, your testimony is that lifestyle that you are living especially that lifestyle that nobody sees the kind of attitude and behavior that you put on when nobody is around when that bishop is not around when that prophet is not around when that pastor is not around to say ah sister sister a sister sister a i thought i thought you were that calm natured and then you go home you are like a, a lioness on your husband, on your brothers and sisters. You are like a tigress. Nobody can 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 mess with you, can talk to you, can even ask dare ask you something. Because you're gonna swallow them up in a gulp. <laughs> so the lifestyle, the secret lifestyle that we live, that attitude, that behavior that we live, that is our testimony. A personal testimony that the Lord Jesus Christ will read and recommend to Daddy, the Almighty Father, on the great day of judgment. I remember my husband. My husband uh, told me about a story back home, and he said that so this man from this village, he was like a terror and a nightmare to the village. All atrocities, all bad stuff in the village, this man's name will pop up. He led a very terrible, terrible <laughs> life. And he did it to the point that he even had to run away from that village. And so he ran away from the village to another city. And for some years, you know, he was there in the new place, the new city. And so one day he met a man, a native from his village, and exchanged pleasantries. He said, how are you? He said, I'm fine. How is everybody in the village? Oh, they are doing fine. And then the man said, uh, when you were coming from my village, I know you were there. You, you, you know me. I am Mr. Pepe. He said, when you were coming from my village, what what were they saying about me? What were they saying about me? And so the man from the, the village said, Ah, my brother, 
the same name you left the the same would say that name that you left it is still there if they mention your name everybody begin to cry everybody begin to put their hands on their head and begin to wail <laughs> so the same name you left is still there beloved whatever character or behavior attitude that you put up today wherever you are you know it taints you it paints and depicts who you are to the people that are witnessing that is that same that that testimony that you are living two or three testimonies and it is establishing heaven and so if whatever testimony they have about us is terrible is bad know for sure that it is written amen it is written but the good news here is that as long as you are not dead yet there is hope and so if that name that you have if that testimony that you have is something like oh are you referring to sister b oh as for sister b you you know already every quarrel that you see in the church of god she is the initiator you initiate all the fight or the quarrels among the women movement you are the gossip who lit fire where there's no you you lit you smell smoke and tell everybody there's a smoke where there's no fire that's your testimony it is written the heaven is watching our lord jesus christ is watching you the testimony that oh this this lady when you go for people's adoring and people's uh, uh, baby shower and funeral she's the one that sell, saves the guinness the beer the star the bad light the hennequin you are the alcohol saver distributing alcohol to people that's your testimony remember jesus said the things that cause people to stumble must come but curse woe, curse is anyone through whom it comes so if your testimony is that you you're a businesswoman you're a businessman you import high uh, high class alcoholic drinks from the u.s from the europe germany <laughs> from canada to asia to mexico you export expensive what they call quality alcoholic drink to ghana to nigeria to gambia to whatever country you are in for people to booze for people to drink and do what and <laughs> remember their sorrows no more you are the stumbling block in their life you are permitting them you are aiding them you are helping them to go to hellfire that's your testimony of yourself there are there are men of god there are women of god who buy guns gun g u n gun you go sell it where people buy it and go do arm robbery your testimony is yourself. Like I said, you instigate fears. Fear in the body of Christ. Always instigating fear. Always putting fear. Not the proper fear of God, but fear. Worldly fear into people. That's your testimony. Heaven is writing. Our Lord Jesus Christ is looking down and is watching. You know, I, I watch on Facebook one young lady from Trinidad and Tobago had this uh, video about two young twins, young girls, I think about the age of 18. They went to a nightclub and on their way back, they had an accident and they died on the spot. 
and you can see from the video their bodies the funeral their body was in the church their coffins were being opened casket had been opened in the church and we are pastors testifying about these young girls they died on their way coming back from nightclub and their bodies are carried to the church you cannot mock god for whatever you are sowing which is your testimony you shall be judged for it you shall reap it amen and so the man of god can come and give the first sermon about you oh this woman whilst you are lying down dead be like this woman was so generous he she gave to the church generously she was the backbone financier of the church she gave her tithe faithfully they have received your tithes and offering your seed and everything but your true self how jesus saw you in your chambers the gossip the malice the hating the instigating of fears and all the bad 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 things that you did that nobody saw you do all the unnatural uh, love or unnatural affection practices homosexuality lesbianism husband sleeping sleeping uh, having sex with their wives through the bathroom everything that is hidden in the bedroom that is your testimony mama that is your testimony sister brother that is your testimony we have churches where you go here in america you there are, there are churches where they have a smoking area a smoking area uh, for some time now, the Lord has opened my my spiritual eyes to see. Uh, anytime I see people that are smoking, I see the demon that is tormenting them. So these folks are coming to church. They have they have a demon that is making them to smoke, and the church has provided a smoking area. Pastor, your testimony is yourself, man of God. Your testimony. It's yourself. That accommodation that you are giving to smokers to smoke in the supposed temple of God, the physical structure. Worst thing, they are destroying their own, the temple, which is the body. And the physical structure that they will also come and be saved uh, through worship, you have, pro you have created an avenue for them to keep destroying themselves and their souls your testimony is yourself church your testimony is how you are not telling people the members of this church the truth the gospel you are not preaching the gospel to them the lord jesus christ his life his uh, uh the life the lifestyle that he led that had no deception in it warning the people and sounding the the gong gong that they should desist from their iniquities so that God will save them. You would rather preach how to master money, how to prosper, how to do this, how to do that, and the entire year is filled with conferences about fin financial breakthrough and financial disinvestment. Your testimony as a church is what you are doing. The, the, the uh, wicked doctrines that you are, you are feeding these children of God with falsehood from the pit of hell your testimony as a church is what you are doing to those people the lord will require their blood from you what is said about you that is the opposite of who you truly are the, the, the nice madam you are the one who receive guests in your home when they come to visit the church but inwardly you are spiritually evil and your intention is to initiate these souls that come to stay or live in your home into witchcraft and other demonic things. Mama, sister, brother, your testimony is that wickedness that you are in. You are pretending you are of God, but you know you are not. 
you 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 are in partnership with the enemy to bring the body of Christ down, to bring that church down. And you are pretending you have the gift of the same, and you are pretending you are prophecy, and you are prophesying from the pit of hell. Don't let your mind deceive you, and don't let Satan deceive, because he's a deceiver. Tell you that as you partner with him and work for him, uh, he's going to defeat God, and he's going to rule, and you're going to have a share in his kingdom. That is the lie from the bottomless pit. But don't wait for it to be too late. So that by the time you realize you are in there burning eternally. I pray that you won't wait till that day come. So whatever testimony that you have about yourself that nobody knows, that you only know your true self, I hope it's a great one that Jesus will recommend and say, well done, good and faithful servant. When I came into my senses, I came to my senses, that was when the Holy Spirit convicted my heart of all the things that I've been pressured to do. I've been influenced to get involved in. And I thank God that I didn't end up in the grave to regret. And I beseech you with the mercies of God as long as you have life. To know that whatever you are doing in your secrecy, that is your testimony. That is your testimony. And our Lord Jesus Christ is going to replay it back to you right from the day you were born to that very day that you took your last breath. I pray that when that testimony is, is shown you, according to Luke 9, 26, he said that anybody who will be ashamed of me, I will also be ashamed of him or her before the Father and his angels. So if the Lord Jesus go through that testimony, that personal testimony of yours, I pray that you'll be found worthy and your name will be found in the Lamb Book of Life. Whatever it is that you are doing, if you need to do restitution, do it. Restitute. Repay if you need to repay anything. Speak the truth. Let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. If you've been lying to get benefit, you've been lying to get whatever it is that is in your life, please go and, and confess. Do, do what is right. The Lord Jesus is coming for holy people. Our Lord Jesus is coming for righteous people. Those who have washed their righteous garment in the lamp, the blood of the lamp. And the row is called in the far, far paradise. I pray that your name will be called, will be found in the Lamb Book of Life. I pray that my name will be found in that Book of Life. And all of us who have come to Christ will have great joy. And even if you've not given your life to Jesus, your testimony is whatever lifestyle that you are still in, brother, my sister, my beloved. Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter the terrible things that you've done in your life. You can turn a new leaf now. It's just a change of mind. You say, enough of this madness that is going on in my life. I have turned a new leaf. I'm going to give the rest of my life to the Lord Jesus Christ to take hold of me to teach me what to do. I do not want to perish. I don't want that testimony to be read to me and it's so awful I cannot even look at the Lord because I'm too ashamed of myself. Today, today that you are not dead yet, today is the day that you can make changes. Today is the day that you can give your life to Jesus. Today is the day that you can say enough of the lies in my life. I'm going to live truthfully from today. I'm going to live for Christ. And I'm going to witness others for Christ. If you would like to fellowship with us. So that you get more trainings in the truth. That will prepare you to make heaven. Our ministry doors are always open. To anyone. If 
you want to give your life to Jesus right now, even as you've heard the gospel, the truth, just lift your two hands in total surrender and say these prayers with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the gift of truth. I believe that you died for my sins and resurrected for my sins. Today, I accept you as my Lord and as my personal Savior. Come into my life and be my Lord forever and ever. And may the Holy Spirit help me. Amen. Beloved, if you pray these simple prayers, the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of God has come in. The Lord Jesus and the blood of Jesus has marked you for the great day of the Lord. Like I said, our ministry doors are open. You can give me a call on 615-481-8074. 615-481-8074. I'm in the U.S., so the country code is 001. Or whatever ministry that preaches about salvation and preparing you for the kingdom, uh, the, the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can join them to fellowship. May God bless you. May God help you to overcome any bad testimony that you have. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.